G'day folks, I'm just uh, flicking the Stry Tiger Nymph in black caviar colour around the perimeter of Lake Hume here. I'm up at Huon Reserve. I've just finished filming my redfin on surface lures video. And I thought before I go home, I might just uh, have a bit of a flick around with a soft plastic. Hey you! You're watching Robbie Fishing. Got him. The black strike tiger nymph has struck black caviar colour this one. Oh, black caviar. See you mate. He hit it hard, but now he's not fighting very well. At first I thought he might have been a bit of fish, but I think he just had a hard hit. Look, the strike tiger nymph in black caviar doing the damage this time. See you, mate. There are so many carp jumping around in this bay at the moment. A bit stormy looking over that way. A bit dark up that way as well. It's New Year's Eve. This joint was crawling with speedboats about two hours ago, but most of them have gone now. Maybe they're all heading off to some New Year's Eve barbecues or something. Got him. Certainly picking up a lot more on those soft plastics than I was on those surface lures. There we go. And they're a little bit bigger, <laughs> much bigger. It's hard to believe that that fish is much bigger, but the other one was the same length as my uh, my index finger. That's a good two inches longer. <laughs> one of my favourite colours when I'm trout fishing for uh, with our soft plastics is the Stry Tiger Nymph in black and gold colour. This is black caviar. It's the same exactly the same color except instead of having gold flake it's got red flake so it's black and red instead of black and gold and redfin love anything with red so the thought is the black will silhouette against that bright sky and the red will just attract redfin like red does and there's another one redfin love things with red on them my pop when he was alive used to tell me that a little bit of red wool on your treble hooks won't go astray when you're fishing for redfin that's a little bit bigger we're upsizing. We're upsizing. <laughs> now I'll give you a demonstration on how I'm using this soft plastic. You can see it's quite a shallow taper here. I'm a good 30 metres from the bank and I'm only up to my chest. I'm in about three, three and a half feet of water. So I reckon another 10 or 15 metres out there, probably only going to be about five foot deep, pretty safe to say. So why would it sink down to what I think is about four or five feet, close to the bottom? If I hit the bottom, I'm likely to catch up, uh, fell up on grass. And then I just bob it up and down like that. Bob it nice and slowly. The lighter the jig head, the slower you can uh, retrieve it back in. But also the lighter the jig head, the, the less cast is a touch, the less casting distance you get. So just bob it back in three or four bobs, let it sink, three or four bobs, let it sink until it's all the way back. Oh, I've been degloved. <laughs> He's pulled the, uh, that strike, pulled the, mangled me plastic a little bit. All of the fish that I've caught in this session, which is what, four or five or something, have all been on this one plastic, but now it's uh, nearing retirement age, I think. And I'll do that again, I'll cast it out. Let it sink a bit. Ideally, I want to try and work it about a foot, 18 inches off the bottom. That way, if there's a fish on the bottom, they'll see it quite easily. And being that it's off the bottom, it's less likely to pick up grass or fell up on a rock or something.
Oh, there's a touch right there in front of me. Just in there, something hit it, just in there. I'll let that sink a bit. And I'll just uh, giggle it up and down in front of me like this, see if he hits it again. Got him. Look at that. He did hit it again. I wasn't even turning the reel. <laughs> well, there you go. I knew he was there. He's certainly one of the bigger fish for today too, which is still not big, but fun. Small fish, big fun. Is that for a motto? I just made it up and I like it. Small fish, big smiles. <laughs> Ooh, that was a touch. And again, got him. Having a blast, folks. Having a blast. This is 100% definitely one of my favourite forms of fishing. I'm going back down a, a couple of sizes with this one, though. I've got to look after this plastic. I don't want to see, mate. It's mangled, but my bag is way over there somewhere on the bank with all my lures in it. If this plastic becomes stuffed, I've got to walk all the way back there to get a new lure, or new plastic and then come back out here and by which stage this school that I've got in front of me may have moved on School me up These reef you make your hand itchy when, you, when they scratch you with their fins Got him Right in, the school's right in front of me. Now, oh, he got off. I was going to show you something about that fish. There's a school right literally just there. So I'll see if I can bob another one. I'm just going to bob that up and down a little bit. Here we go. Something touched it. They're there. Got him. I just want to show you something with the red fin. I'll show you where they're dangerous when you hold them. I'm only thought to do this now because one spiked me on the thumb there and I'm very itchy. Anywhere along the top of that dorsal fin there will make you itchy, particularly this black area down the back. If they spike you, you will get itchy. And on the side of the gills, they've got sharp gill rakers. At this size, they're not so bad, but as they get bigger, those gill rakers get sharper. So be careful of the side of the gills and be careful of the top of that dorsal fin. Everything else is pretty fine. And it doesn't hurt. It's not going to, it's not the end of the world. It just makes you itchy. I'm quite itchy now because I've, uh, been stung by one of these ones that I've caught in the last 10 minutes. I wonder where they went. The school's gone. Well, they've had a blast with the black caviar strike tiger nymph with the claws removed, wherever they went. Maybe they've just gone out a bit further. There they are, there's a touch. And again, got, oh, I missed him. Hit it, hit it, hit it. There we go, got him. Oh, this one's putting a bit of a bend in the rod. Got a bit of energy, this one. Oh, he swallowed the bloody, he swallowed the jig head. Mate, I'm sorry to do this to you, but you are now, Seagull food or pelican food or whoever gets you first. I'll uh, yeet you down there as Holly says. <laughs> yeet. But I'm sure something will find you very and nice for tea tonight. Something different. 
it's windy and choppy. It's gone from being really, really smooth to being really, really windy and the waves are growing in size quite quickly. This is why when I'm kayak fishing in these bigger lakes, whether it be here at Lake Hume or Warringah Basin, got him. this is why I don't venture too far from the bank at any given time. Well, I'm the biggest one today. Because if that wind just springs up from nowhere like it has now, suddenly the lake can become rough and treacherous. See you later, mate. Now, I'm not saying that it's rough and treacherous yet, but the wind is quite strong. And if it blows like this for five minutes or so, it's going to get treacherous. Righto, folks, I'm heading out of here. Have a look at the size of the waves. It's just come up really rough, really quickly. I've got to get going shortly anyway, so this isn't bothering me in the slightest, but I've got a funny feeling these waves are about to get a lot bigger because the wind is quite strong. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've liked this video. If you have, want to give it a big fat thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and hopefully I'll see you in my next video.